I hired a brand designer a couple of weeks ago, and this is what I've learned so far. So I am about one year, just over one year into full-fledged business. Like it's no longer just a side hustle. It's not like a project that I'm just kind of trying to like figure out, see what I want to do with. Like I'm in business and I'm making this my career, my full-time dream, passion, building a brand and business to support my lifestyle and just kind of do my own thing. <laughs> um, and so up until this point, I have done everything DIY and now my business, so I run a company called Bear Room Media. It's a content marketing agency specifically for, or I should say specializing in craft brands. Think wineries, distilleries, breweries, etc. And, um, I, so I, I do everything, you know, photography, videography, social media marketing, email marketing, everything kind of under that umbrella and a little bit of brand work. I, I would by no means call myself like a graphic designer or a brand designer or anything. Those are skills that I am working on and improving and I hope to delve more into that space in the future, but it's not my like current area of expertise. It's more of kind of a I know the I know enough to be dangerous, right? And and help my kind of newer or cl newer clients or younger clients that maybe don't have branding in place or can't afford it to kind of give them a little bit to get started. Um, but by no means is that my like bread and butter, right? And so up until this point, I like I said, I know enough to be dangerous. So I've kind of been the DIY route um, with the the skills and knowledge that I have, and you know YouTube and Canva. Um, but now we're getting serious and I'm, I love the branding I have so far. I think it's pretty good for, you know, my level of expertise and it's got me to where I am, but I'm at the point where I want to, and I'm ready to elevate and I'm investing in myself. I'm investing in the brand and the business. And I want to attract those higher ticket, higher value clients uh, as I'm figuring out really the direction that I want this business to go and who it is that I want to work with and the skill set that I want to lean into and services I want to offer to support my lifestyle. Uh, so that being said, I'm investing a lot into my business this year, starting with a brand designer. And she was referred to me, I'll link her information below, um, but she was referred to me by a client of mine who we, we've only started working together in this client relationship recently, but we've, we've known each other for several years. In fact, I worked for her in a past life um, and I've always just loved her branding. Like it's so clean and elevated and it's very much her and it attracts her her ideal client. And she recently, as we started working together, had just gone through kind of a refresh of her brand and used this same person who did her original branding to kind of revamp her, her style. Um, and so I was like, who, who do you, she, I didn't even have to ask. She just gave me her information. She's like, you're going to love her. Her name's Carly. I, I've loved working with her. That's why I'm working, working with her a second time. And I kid you not, we got off of our client meeting call and I emailed her and filled out her like inquiry form and said, you know, this person referred me. I love your work. I, I did a little bit more, don't get me wrong, I did a little bit more research. I went and checked out her Instagram. I checked out her website, just got to know her and her vibe like a little bit more. And, but it didn't take much. I was like, it, everything, how she shows up online and her branding matches the service that she provides and the way that my client talks about working with her. Like it just all was so cohesive and was a no brainer for me just to reach out and be like, I'm interested. And so going through this process has done a few things for me. Um, first off, it's kind of given some more clarity of the type of client that I want to work with and also put me in a position to be the client for her that I want to work with. And what I mean by that is I did my I did my research. I got a referral. I came in as a warm lead. And then I did my research. I checked out her socials. I checked out her website. I got to know her a little bit more. I kind of qualified myself to determine like, okay, yes, yes, I checked the boxes of who she works with enough to to reach out. 
And then what was that client, what was that prospect experience like? And in the prospect experience that I want to give to my potential clients, I filled out her inquiry form. I got an immediate response. I heard from her, I think the next day. And I liked how she did it. She just sends, she sends a nice warm email, very personalized with an attached PDF of her service offerings. Very branded, very beautiful, but just to the point exactly of like, this is what she offers. This is what it costs. This is kind of the type of person that is a good fit typically for each type of service. And uh, I went for it. I just booked her top tier service. Um, It it wasn't, she's very reasonably priced, um, but also like I'm prepared to make this investment. I know I'm confident in based on the referral that I got and based on her branding, I'm confident that I'm going to get what I want out of this investment and it's going to take me to the next level for the other series of things that I want to do in this business this year as I continue to invest in it and invest in myself. Um, And so going through this process, just that initial starting process of just starting to work with her was eye-opening of like, that's what I want the process to be like for my potential clients. I I want them to be able to take themselves through that journey just like I did and then have that immediately quick and have that just seamless onboarding of and and not questioning my value or questioning my services. Just know they they know that that's what they're going to get and they want to sign up. So now kind of getting into working with her these last couple of weeks, these are a few things that I've learned. Um, So like I mentioned, the process with her is she sent me her workbook and I, like I said, I signed up for the full meal deal, the full intensive brand design with her. And part of, and to get things started is, is a hefty workbook. And it's not too dissimilar from what I send my clients. And then the st- subsequent strategy deck that she sent me after completing that workbook is also not too different from the strategy deck that I put together for my one-on-one, um, social media marketing clients. So I, that was a very interesting comparison to see and also just a little bit validating for like, oh, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm doing the right things. Like, cool. Um, but having this outside set of eyes, this outside professional to look at my brand and ask me the hard questions, the questions I've been asking myself, but that I've just been like lazy answering it. Now I'm like, I'm invested and I'm forced to answer these questions about who I am, who my brand is, who I wanna work with, what services do I offer? What's my mission? What's my vision? How do I stand out in the marketplace? Who are my competitors? What do I want my customer, potential customer to feel, to embrace when they interact with me and when they interact with my brand? and where do I want to go? Where do I see myself in a year and five years and 10 years and 20 years? You know, all of these kind of questions that are really important to get clarity on when you've committed to building something bigger than yourself. And that's where I'm at right now. So, so that's been huge for me. Again, we're just a couple weeks in. Um, the other, the, the other, the next thing I'll say that has been very, um, that I've learned from working with Carly so far is I don't need to, and I shouldn't try to do everything on my own. So if you're a fellow solopreneur, entrepreneur, business owner, what have you, I hope you feel the same way. Um, It's hard to accept or admit maybe that I can't do everything on my own, um, but it's also kind of relieving to admit that I don't need to do everything on my own. That's not the best use of my time as I'm stepping into being a business owner and being more of a business owner and less of a freelancer. It's more, it's imperative that I determine what is the best use of my time and the things that aren't the best use of my time, I need to delegate those, whether that be to like a, a virtual assistant or to another creative, another professional, like what should I be outsourcing and what should I be doing myself? Like what's my, you know, some people call it your zone of genius. Um, but yeah, so it's been, it's been very eye opening, but not necessarily in like a negative way in more of an empowering way of like, no, no, I'm, I'm a business owner. Like I'm building a brand and it's okay for me to ask for help and to branch out. And I should be doing those things. And if, 
I want to hold myself as a professional and as an elevated professional working with high value brands, then I need to be a high value brand and I need to be a high value client to other professionals. And it's just all going to come full circle, attracting those types of brands to work with me. Next thing I've learned about working with this brand designer and going through her process is that all of these things, you know, being kind of new to this marketing, creative, entrepreneurial space, I question myself a lot. I'm like, do I know what I'm talking about? Is Am I thinking about this the right way? And now engaging another creative professional, I'm learning like, oh, like I don't, one, I don't know everything. Like, oh no, I wasn't thinking about that right, the right way, but Two, I actually know a little bit more than I think, or I'm, I'm going about things in the right way. Like it's been, like I said, it's been a little bit validating. So especially when it comes to this broad realm of being a creative entrepreneur, all of these things, all of these service offerings that I want to offer and in the um, kind of avenues that I want to take my business in and where I'm finding my skill set and strengths lie, it's all interconnected. Brand design, social media, email, content like photography videography it's all interconnected and you i'm learning you really can't have one without the other and so going back to like i don't need to do everything nor should i be doing everything on my own um i i can't be successful (laughs) if i try to just be everything to everyone and do everything under the sun and wear all the hats i know is, you know, we, we feel like we have to from like financial constraints or whatever else. And there are times in business like where you have to, and I'm still in that time. Like I can't delegate and, and hand off everything, nor should I, but, but I, you know, I, I don't just have like money to like here, here, like capital to put all these different places, but I want to get to that point. And as I have the ability to outsource things, for example, or, or get a second set of eyes or get it work with another professional, I'm doing those things and it feels like a little bit of a stretch, but I think that means that you're growing too. Like you're, if you don't feel like you're stretching yourself in some regard, then you're probably not growing. And so some of those examples of, you know, I've hired a brand brand designer, a big piece, probably a more boring piece to some degree, but a very important piece is I finally hired a CPA, an accountant and a bookkeeper. I hired essentially an accounting team, a financials team, to take that piece off my plate and do it in a way that I could, you know, I'm pretty good in in that area. You know, like my background is as a financial advisor, but when it comes to that kind of stuff, taxes, accounting, bookkeeping, reconciling, you know, P&L, all that is not my area of expertise. I'm very interested in it and I understand it, but it's a big important piece of growing a business that I need to hand off to someone now that I can afford to, and they're going to help me grow from in that regard, they're going to help me get my financials or in, in better order than they are and help them grow and help me optimize that piece of my business. So that's another, that's a, that's a video for another day. Um, I'll, I'll dive into more of the financial side of the business. Um, cause I am very passionate about that with, you know, being a former, actually still technically a current financial advisor. I'm keeping my licensing, um, just not really working, you know, with those clients anymore, but, um, yeah. So, so it's just kind of pieces again, you know, brand design, content creation, photography, videography, social media marketing, email marketing, paid ads, like it all flows together. And I'm learning that working with this brand designer and getting my messaging and my visual identity and a kind of pinpointed is as I was going through her workbook and as I'm identifying and working through those areas with her, it's those things that are then feeding the rest of my business. And this is kind of the last, second to last point that I want to make. Getting clear on my visual identity, my mission, my vision, my ideal client, their pain points, but then also my ideal lifestyle. And again, you know, going back to one of one of my former mentors and someone I still look up to and I follow and I engage with on a regular basis, Zach Kravitz, amazing business coach. If you're in the market for one. Um, or if not, at least just follow his Instagram because like every day, just gems. So shout out Zach. But um, I love that he says like, you you build the business around your life, not the other way around. And that's really hard to do. And I'm grateful that I found him so early on in my journey 
because I think if I hadn't or hadn't found someone someone else like him, I know he's not the only one. There's there's several other kind of creative entrepreneurs in that space, but Zach's one I really identify with. Another one is Tom Nosk. I love learning from him as well. But some things they have in common is talking about how, you know, as you dive into this creative entrepreneurial world, um, another one is, is Landon from Full-Time Filmmaker, Happy Creative, shout out. Um, it's real easy to get into the weeds and start just finding ways to make money. Because yes, that's important. That's how we get our business off the ground. But you can quickly get into, dig yourself into a hole of having a business that now just feels like your nine to five used to, um, and and that and it can be really kind of demotivating, honestly. And that's the space that I've started to get myself into these past few months. But I'm grateful to to be aware of them and their coaching to recognize it early on. Because I think if I hadn't, then I'd still be feeling in this way a year from now and I'd be deeper into business. And yeah, maybe I'd be doing well financially, better, even better financially than I am now. Or maybe I wouldn't, who knows, but I know I wouldn't be any happier because I'd be building my life around my business and not the other way around. And so um, that's, really a a big reason why I decided to first engage when I was looking at, okay, how I want to invest my business this year. The first step was the financial side, accounting side. I got that taken care of a couple months ago. Well, about a month ago, we're, we're again, like I said, video for another day. Second, in terms of my business and brand and the direction I want to go with Bellroom Media and also with my personal brand, I, it was, it was a brand designer. And, and a very specific one. And, and Carly, who I'm working with, checks the boxes of not just someone who's going to give me a pretty, you know, logo and social media templates or, you know, color palette and topography and that kind of stuff. Yes, she's doing all that, but she goes so much deeper than that. And I think that's the mark of a good brand designer and, and a professional who I can um, collaborate with, if you will. And so again, going through this work and I'm only a couple weeks in and I'm already getting more clarity on my business than I've had in a while uh, because getting clear on some of these things is what's fueling the direction of my business and my marketing. Something as simple as making this video, getting clear on all of these other things with her and all these other aspects of my brand is helping me dial in my service offerings, my pricing, my work schedule, my product offerings, the social platforms I'm gonna prioritize, my email marketing, how I'm gonna scale my business. And I'm just really grateful to have had such a great referral that I didn't have to go digging through. (laughs) There's like so many to choose from, but I'm happy. I'm really happy to be working with Carly and I'm getting so much clarity just a couple weeks in. So um, this has been a lot. This is a long video already. Wow. I probably rambled a bit, but this is kind of the last thing that I'll say and kind of wrap up this video. I hope it's been helpful and not too boring. Um, it's again, it's kind of been a little bit of an outlet for me just kind of talking through things. But the last thing I'm going to say is I know it can be really tough to invest in yourself and invest in your business. I think it's tough to invest in your business because you are investing in yourself. And I think a lot of us creative entrepreneurs have a imposter syndrome at any point in our career, especially if we're early on. But I know several creators, the ones who I listed off that I look up to, I know they talk about imposter syndrome and just kind of dealing with some of these mental roadblocks. Um, but I also know, so beyond that, it can literally be financially tough, like actually tough, like finding the dollars. And I know I'm very lucky and, and grateful. I know I've put myself in the position that I am through the hard work that I do, but I'm, but I've also t- even to get to this point, um, have had, you know, I think we all have a little bit of luck and our, all of our journeys are a little bit different. And like I said, I'll talk about my financial side of things and just business journey here in another video, but um, I think it's important to still, to just do it, to find a way to do it. It doesn't have to be big, your investments, you know, monetarily, emotionally, physically, whatever it is. 
Um, it, you have to do it all at once. You have to do it all in one fell swoop and, and one fell swoop. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, and I don't want you to think that if you can't do it all, you can't do any of it. Cause I ran into that a lot, you know, done is better than perfect a lot of the time and just do what you can invest what time you can invest what money you can don't put yourself into a mountain of debt I'm never gonna like advertise that by any means um but I do want you to think about yourself and what's important to you and and the lifestyle that you dream of and who you're important in and know that you can accomplish it I have to remind myself of that. Um, it's not all going to be sunshine and rainbows, but know that, you know, if you don't invest in yourself, whether that be emotionally and financially, what have you, you're just going to stay exactly where you are. And that's not necessarily bad, you know, but you just have to decide what it is that you want. Do you, are you content with what you are, what you have, what you're doing, or do you want more? Do you want different? I think that even if you are content, you should always be investing in yourself and in your future, whether that's through a course, a community, books you read, you know, podcasts you listen to, watching videos like this, making videos like this. Uh, just don't stay stagnant. And some investments will definitely feel tougher than others. They'll feel riskier than others. In my opinion, the greater risk is not taking any chances. And, and it's, the greater risk is just staying exactly where you are. Even if you're happy where you are, um, things are always changing. So thanks for listening. If you stay till the end, comment, invest in yourself. And... I will get better at these. <laughs> I will try not ramble as much, but my hope is that um, it was helpful, or maybe relatable uh, for at least one of you. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.